controlled by the two lower antennas. As I move my right hand towards the lower right antenna, the math's envelope begins cycling. The right hand controls the attack time of the envelope, and the left hand antenna controls the decay time. If I hold my hand steady, then I'll get similar envelopes and an even tempo. My right hand controls the vibrato for the melody voice. The voltage from the antenna is passed through an AC coupled FM input to the melody oscillator. This ensures that not every movement past the antenna will change the pitches, only those movements that are fast enough to pass the AC coupling. Each cycle of the math's envelope grabs a new pitch CV from the arpeggiated CV from the keyboard. Essentially, the melody patch functions like a Barton's Krell. In Todd Barton's original Krell, two different function generators control the attack and the decay of the main envelope separately, generating the very organic envelopes. In this patch, it is my left and right hand that are controlling the decay and the attack of the math's envelope. Essentially, I'm taking the place of those two modulating LFOs. The antennas allow me to continually change the shape of the melody envelope. If my right hand is close to the right antenna, then I'll have a quick attack. As I bring my left hand forward, the decay time will shorten and I'll get quicker strings of notes. Bringing my left hand quickly towards the left antenna stops the math's envelope from cycling, effectively breaking the melody. If I pull both hands away, then the melody will slowly come to a stop as the long decay time allows the melody note to fade out. The first polyphonic three-voice patch is controlled by the antennas in a similar way to the melody patch, the difference being that they are reversed. My left hand controls the attack, and my right hand controls the decay. I can break the polyphonic envelope by bringing my right hand quickly up towards the right-hand side antenna, and my left hand now controls vibrato and some timbral shifts in the polyphonic oscillator. With each cycle, the shift register in the teleharmonic oscillator will grab another pitch CV from the arpeggiator coming from the keyboard. The polyphonic oscillator tracks the melody notes, creating shifting harmonies that are continually changing. 
by passing my left hand beneath the light, I can cause the polyphonic oscillator to hold all of its pitches, allowing multiple reiterations of the envelope without loading any new pitches. The polyphonic oscillator runs at about one-third the pace of the melody oscillator. By holding my hands in specific spots, I can get the two envelopes, melody and poly envelope, to run in rhythmically coherent ways. The counter melody oscillator is a single low pitch that is triggered and controlled by a single antenna directly in the middle. This allows my left hand to control that envelope while my left elbow still controls the lower left hand antenna. The counter melody antenna is passed through a Pittsburgh envelope whose attack and decay can be changed. The output from the antenna drives not only the gain and the filter frequency that the oscillator is passed through, but also the amount of wave folding and audio FM to the low pass filter. The second polyphonic part is another three voice telharmonic oscillator. This time, the oscillator is controlled by a microphone passed through amplification onto an envelope follower and a dope for vocoder. The envelope follower takes the pressure from the microphone and uses it to open and close a dope for multi-mode filter. slew generator is used to smooth out the microphone's output as it controls both the dope for filter and dope for vocoder. The vocoder side of the patch uses very few decoding bands to control groupings of encoding bands. Different from regular vocoding, this tends to function more like a dynamic filter. An envelope follower threshold determines when new pitches from the sample and hold are loaded into the telharmonic polyphonic oscillator. This part of the patch allows me to sustain long chords with shifting timbre or to create short rhythmic pulses. The microphone envelope follower signal is also used to create the percussion voice. The envelope follower is passed to a resonant low-pass gate whose input is white noise. The output bursts range from wind sounds, snare drums, short bursts, and burbling noise sounds.